Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collider channel. We have another exclusive interview. I am so excited to welcome Stanley Tucci to the channel and especially to talk about Supernova. I'm sure you're hearing this a lot right now, but uh, this is something else. And you and Colin are both incredible in it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, you seem to like it. I'm, I'm glad. So to start off here. It is a beautiful movie, but I can't imagine it was very easy living in a story like that for an extended period of time. And I know there might be a whole bunch of answers to this question, but what would you say it was about the script that made you say, I've got to make this commitment. I've got to be a part of telling the story. It was so beautiful. It was so beautifully written. Um, it, it was restrained. It was poetic. It was, um, um, uh, it was truthful. Um, it was just gorgeous. And you don't come along, you know, scripts like that don't come along very often. Uh, and then I watched Harry's first film, Harry McQueen, the director, and watched his first film, which I thought was equally as beautiful and poignant in, in a different way. But he, and also the fact that he had made that movie in 11 days, I think for 10,000 pounds. And as an independent filmmaker, I know how hard that is to do. And I thought it was gorgeous. And then I met with him and he was equally as wonderful, he was as wonderful as his films. So it was a pretty easy, <laughs> I was so flattered to, that he asked me to do it. And then I thought that, you know, Colin would be right. And I mentioned that to Harry after, of course, I gave Colin the script. And um, then it all worked out. I have so many follow-ups, where to begin? Maybe first, the idea of this movie having restraint, but specifically when it comes to the history of the characters, because I'm always really fascinated when a script manages to convey that a character exists beyond the immediate story that you're experiencing without actually giving you that information. So for you trying to bring that to screen, are you able to do anything on set to make sure that's coming across or is that mostly just in the script? It's, it's in the script, but things are always altered every day when you're, when you're filming, uh, when you're making a film. First, you do a little bit, you talk through the script, um, you know, in rehearsals. We just had like a, a day or so of rehearsal a little bit, just to run through scenes and play around with stuff. And, and then we would talk and say like, well, maybe this scene, we don't need this line and maybe this, maybe you don't need that. Maybe this could, you know. Uh, but basically, we stayed within, if we did anything, we stripped away things from, from an already sort of uh, sparsely written script. Um, again, because Harry had done so much research and written it so truthfully, um, you didn't need to say a lot. But what you did say was uh, really meant, <laughs> really meant something. I find that I usually get a little obsessive with character backstory when the characters really strike a chord. So even though I want more, I feel like it's because you guys are successful in what you just gave me. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad. Yeah, because there was no, I mean, we don't, there was no back. I mean, the backstory was, you know, they've been together for 20 years. Yeah. Or, you know, and he does this, he does this. They love each other. That's it. You don't need the specifics to still feel you, the weight of all need that. It. It, Sometimes you can get bogged down in that and then the writer can get bogged down in that or the actor can get bogged down in that. And it doesn't do anybody any good. Just because I'm curious now, is there any example of a past project where, I don't know, in order to not get bogged down by that, you had to strip something away from the character that was in the script that you were meant to have said that served the character better to have not said at all? Oh, absolutely. Every script. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I mean, literally every movie I do, I take away. People always say, well, actor, <laughs> people always think, or maybe there are some actors like this. They want, people who want more lines. Most actors don't. They want less lines. They want fewer lines because, well, when you get to be my age, they're harder to remember. But also you, the real reason is that you, you know what you can do without saying a word. And I think as you get older and you do it more, you know that maybe you have to say less and less. I'm not saying every film should be that way. 
some characters are obviously it's warranted that they're more more verbose than others, but generally speaking, um, most dialogue is overwritten, and um, it's it's unfortunately a lot of times falls to the actor to to sort of go. Mm, let's take that away, that away, that away, that away, that away, that away, that away. And then once the, often the director hears it, they go, oh, yeah, we don't need that. So now going back to the research for this, because I know that Harry really did his work in that respect, but for you in particular, what kind of research did you do into young onset dementia and maybe also the particular type that Tusker is facing? And is there any specific thing you learned that maybe functioned as an anchor of sorts while you were playing the role? Yeah, um, I, Harry, was, Harry just gave us all of his research. Uh, articles, uh, documentaries, all that sort of stuff. And you just kind of immerse yourself in it. Particularly for me, particularly helpful for me were the documentaries. Um, Louis Thoreau had made uh, a couple of shows, episodes on it. Um, there's that Glenn Campbell documentary. Um, there are a number of things. We talked to a doctor who showed us footage of patients and um, there are a lot, there's a lot of stuff. That stuff was invaluable to me. And I think one of the things that was really interesting is very hard to watch because it's hard, it's heartbreaking. So I could only watch it for little bits at a time. And then you just, you know, it's so moving and it's, and anxiety, uh, causing. Um, but one of the things that was really interesting to me was the, you know, people would disappear for a moment and then suddenly they'd come back. But of course they had no idea that they disappeared. So that is frightening and, but fast. And it, and it happened to almost all of them in the same way. But also when they were asked to do something, um, and this, this particular kind of early, early onset is, uh, is connected to the, to the visual. And when they were asked to do something like grab a, a cup out of someone's hand or write a, a number or something like that, they would go to do it and they wouldn't be able to do it. And the first thing they would do is laugh after, after it. They'd go, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. And then, and you see that in the, in the Glenn Campbell documentary too. And the laughter, what is that laughter? The laughter is how absurd that I couldn't do it. I'm also deflecting my pain or anxiety about it. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's so much in that laugh. Um, so to me, that was, that, was, that, was, that, that was a kind of anchor for me. So now... Going back to working with Harry, but actually maybe start with a broader directing question for you because we know that what you direct and you act. So when you first started directing, is there any project that you signed on for as an actor where you found that directing brain kicking in more so than ever in terms of determining whether or not you wanted to sign on for that project? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. I don't, I can't say which one in particular, but I know that that, that, that happens. And there are certain projects. There, yeah, yeah. And there are, there are certain projects that you're asked to do and you think, oh God, I wish I were directing this, you know, like, and then you think, and then sometimes you meet the director and you think, oh boy, I really wish I were directing this, you know, because this person doesn't know what they're doing. Or, <laughs> or, my God, I never could have directed this. This person is amazing. Um, there was one movie, a, a Hollywood movie that I was asked to do. And it, and I said, I, I just don't think that I know how to do that. And, and I won't tell you what it was. And it was, I was asked by the, by the star of the movie to do it. And then the movie ended up being very successful. And somebody said to me, see, it was so successful. Why didn't you direct it? It was so good. Why didn't you direct it? I said, it was so good and successful because I didn't direct it. 
That's why. If I, <laughs> if I, I mean, it's just like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense that someone would say that. But, you know, to me, you, you have to, it's, it's good to have the eye of a director when you're acting because it challenges the director. You're able to ask all the right questions. You just have to make sure that you're not annoying because it's not your movie. So now kind of flipping that around to Harry a little, because he also has experience acting in addition to directing. Yeah. So can you see that uh, giving his actor, his style when directing his actors a unique touch that he has the experience in both departments? Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. The thing about Harry is that he's a gentleman and a gentle man. Um, and he is extremely intelligent. And you see very well that he'll, he'll give you, and he gives you very little direction, really. Uh, but you know that just from his script that he knows about acting. And then you know when he's on set, because he doesn't give you a lot of direction that he knows about acting. So now looping Colin into this, because I know you, you had already mentioned, I believe, that you played a part in bringing him aboard on this project. So what was it when this opportunity came up that made you think he is perfect to star opposite me in this movie? Was it your past collaborations, uh, some of his other work, your friendship, you name it? Everything. Everything you just said. Uh, I love him. We've been friends for 20 years. Um, he's uh, incredibly... A um, good person and a great friend. He's a great father. He's and he's just one of the best actors ever. Um, and we have the best time together. We don't seem to get bored of each other. I don't, which doesn't really make any sense because we're not very interesting. And he, he's just great. And I read it and I thought, oh my god, Colin has to do this. And um, and then of course I like I, I slipped it to Colin without telling Harry, which was naughty. And, um, uh, but then Harry was like, oh, wow, do you think he'd do it? I go, hell no, I, I, I hope so. He's an idiot if he doesn't. And um, it was, uh, Colin said, it's so beautiful. I said, I know. How can you say you're not very interesting when over the past <laughs> year, your cocktail videos alone have just blown up and become <laughs> such an adored part of social media? Yeah, I'm interesting when I have a drink in my hand. Um, <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone is, or at least they think they are. Yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. a little too accurate. I was also reading that there was a point in this project when you two were reading for the opposite roles. So just for fun here, have you ever thought through what the movie might look like if he had played Tusker and you had played Sam? Yeah, and I can't, I can't really picture it. It sounds funny. I think that I think that we did it the way we were supposed to do it. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, Harry offered me the role of Sam, and and that was the way we went into it. Colin was going to play Tusker, and then I, I kept reading it and thinking something's wrong. It doesn't. Something feels. I wonder if we. And then Colin comes to me one day. He goes, "We should switch roles." And I said, yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. So we went to Harry and poor Harry, you know, was just, you know, like, oh God, why did I get stuck with these two? And, and then he said, all right, well, let's read, uh, let's read it. Let's, you know, let's pick some scenes and we'll read them one way, read them the other way. And then we did. And it was pretty evident that that was the way it was supposed to be. I mean, after seeing the movie, I can't see it any other way. Yeah, it's weird. You can't, you can't, no, I can't see it. So I've got a two-parter for you now, as far as uh, working with Colin goes. So what is one way that your unique approaches to your work maybe served the film very well? And then what's a way that Colin maybe challenges you to adapt that improved your work? Yes, okay, those are great questions. Um, how come you can't do every interview ever? Um, I'm so glad we're recording this. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're, you're great. You, um, I think, yes, the, to, to your first question, um, our approaches are, are different. I'm much more, I will stray outside the script. 
I'll improvise quite a bit. I'll repeat things. I'll go back and just blah, 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 like that. Like the scene in the, in the bed where we fall out of bed. A lot of that is, it, it's in the script, but then I, I just sort of expanded it and changed it. And, and I'll throw things in to just, you know, just, pick, I don't know why. I don't, I don't I have no idea why. Um, to keep it, to, I guess, to keep it fresh, to keep it honest, to keep it real, but without certainly um, destroying Harry's beautiful script. Um, and luckily, Harry was fine with that. So I'm much more likely to do things like that. If I can, if Colin says something to me, we're riding in the car and he has a line, then I have a line, then he has a line, then I have a line. If I couldn't hear him, I would just say, what? And he'd have to repeat the line. And, but it came from the, I mean, I sort of heard him, but I wanted just to say what, because it was so loud in there, it just seemed more natural. And I think what that does is it, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps both of us on our toes. And I think that's a good thing. R regarding what Colin is so, is so wonderful, um, and he's very, he's much more patient than I am uh, and uh, on set. I like to move very quickly and he's much more relaxed and, you know, off, off screen, I'd be sitting there going, well, why aren't we shooting? I don't understand why this is taking so long. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's only a one page scene. This is just silly, you know? And I'd sort of go, Harry, what are we doing? And Colin would go, Stanley, just relax. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's only five o'clock. I know, but I want to I, 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 something. Um, so he's uh, he he taught me a good lesson. I'm gonna have to let you go soon, sadly. But before I do, every single time I do an interview, I always ask my colleagues if they have any questions for the person that I'm lucky enough to talk to. And okay. one of the hottest topics that was suggested by the Collider staff is they all want to know what it was like for you working with Michael Bay. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know that you've already described his process as I believe manic and frantic. So maybe what would you say is a con, but also a pro of working that way, especially on a gigantic blockbuster set like the Transformers movies? The, 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 pro, the pro is you, you get a paycheck, you get a real paycheck and that's exciting. That's always exciting. Um, the pro is also you get to go to lots of different locations where you'd probably never go in your entire life, like Chicago. I'm kidding, but no, uh, you know. Um, but then also, I think the another this is what you know the the, only, the best way to describe it is Steve Buscemi, who worked with Michael a couple of times, described it the best way. He goes, "It's like making an independent film with a lot of money," and that is true. The, the, there is, what I really like about Michael is that he loves actors and, and he's very, very spontaneous. Um, you, you can walk on to the set and you might have no idea what you're gonna do that day. <laughs> and that is, for some people that's fine, for some people it freaks them out. I, I had a great, I actually had a really great time working with him. Um, he, he's super smart. He, um, the, the only, the hard part is sometimes when it comes to the stunts, um, because there isn't a lot of preparation, it can be a bit dangerous. Understandable. Yeah. Given your experience on sets like that, and also what you brought up a little earlier, if you did sign on to direct, you know, a massive budget blockbuster, what is a quality about your previous sets that you would want to bring to those in order to, I don't know, make it the most successfully creative experience possible? Spontaneity, being able to, uh, and preparation. I really like to prepare. I like to be as prepared as possible and then be spontaneous when I need to be. Preparation allows for spontaneity. I, I feel the same way. That's why I'm looking at a mile long list of questions right now. <laughs> so I could play around on the spot, but also yeah. I, yeah. I have to let you go. I could, I could truly talk about 
supernova all day long. You are phenomenal in it. And I can't recommend it enough to everybody out there. The movie is in theaters now. And also you could see it digitally on February 16th. And please do not miss it. Stanley, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. I appreciate thank you it. so much. It really was a pleasure.